Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to go through just the basic fundamentals of Grasshopper. So um, you'll be learning about what Grasshopper is, how to install plugins, um, components uh, and um, key data structures of Grasshopper. I'll be using um, the Grasshopper Basics um, file. Um, which can be found in the student package um, that has been sent out to you. So to start off with, um, if we open up Rhino 7, um, what we want to do is in the command bar, just type grasshopper, and that's going to load um, grasshop, the grasshopper canvas. Um, so the grasshopper canvas looks like this. Um, it's basically a blank canvas when you open it. Um, and just to, to pan around Grasshopper, we just right click and we can pan around. Um, importantly, we've got file, open documents, save documents, um, edit, we can copy and paste, etc. Uh, view display, which I'll get into. Um, the main things that you need to know in terms of getting around the canvas is um, this toolbar here. Um, which basically is where all our Grasshopper components live. Um, so the ones that are pre-installed as well as um, the plugins, which I'll show you how to install them um, later in this tutorial. So if we just go through these components um, libraries, we've got um, parameter components, which generally are our kind of container geometry containers, which I'll speak about what they are. Um, we've got math type of components, which are operations, addition, multiplication. We've got different types of sets, which deal with um, data lists management, which um, I'm not going to show you today, but we'll go through that um, throughout the semester. We've got different vector based um, components, such as points, grids, um, and then curves, surfaces, meshes, and, um, intersections, etc. as well as then um, all the different plugins um, that I've installed. Um, so moving into the Grasshopper Basics um, file. So in order to open a file, we can either just go file open or we can go straight in and we can just drag our file um, into the Grasshopper canvas and that's going to open up um, the um, file. Um, so to start off with, um, basically Grasshopper is a visual um, coding software. So it's kind of one step removed from manually coding um, and writing lines of code, where instead uh, Grasshopper provides us with um, these components, so this being a component, where we can visually um, connect things um, by basically dragging and um, dropping um, different components and we can connect these components to create the, a complex kind of algorithm um, that then we can then visualize inside of Rhino and we can send then geometry back and forth into Rhino. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to speak about um, geometry containers. So um, there are lots of different types of geometry containers um, and these are basically important to get your geometry that you want from Rhino into Grasshopper. Um, so at the moment, uh, we've got a box, so a point and some curves, um, and they basically live inside of Rhino. But what we need to do is we need to reference these types of geometries into um, Grasshopper. So Grasshopper knows what it's dealing with in terms of geometry or data. Um, so there, these can be found in that first parameter um, section under geometry. And so you see we've got a whole suite of um, geometry containers. Um, the main ones that I tend to use is this geometry container. 
Um, so this geometry can just contain um, any type of geometry, and then you have um, specific um, geometry types, so points, vectors, curves. So we're going to um, start inputting some of these. So you can see now these are kind of orange at the moment, so they're basically empty. So what I want to do is um, to reference in a um, geometry from Rhino, all we need to do is select our um, container. Um, we can also just um, drop one in. Right click on it and then navigate to set one point and it's going to ask in Rhino to select the point. So I'm just going to select this point and I'm going to do this for the same thing for um, curves. So I can set multiple curves. So this can be any number. So I just right click set multiple curves and I'm going to choose the curves and press enter. And I'm also going to do that for geometry as well and set this box. So now you can see they've gone kind of light gray. Um, and so we've got a geometry, a point and a curve. And you can see every time I select it, it's going to highlight it in green um, what I've selected as well and then it's going to be red if I just you know have this on the canvas so this brings me to the first thing about um, how do we visualize things in Grasshopper or how Grasshopper visualizes things so if you see here in the top right hand corner um, we've got a few visualization methods so by default um, it's going to be on this red cylinder and, and that basically is going to draw everything um, that you've every geometry that's referenced in um, on the canvas. If I switch this to this green um, cylinder here, you'll see everything um, gets hidden, and it's only going to show me what um, is in Grasshopper when I select the components. So you can see here as I'm siphoning through these, it's showing me what I've selected, and then there are a few others. If I navigate back, um, I can just see wireframes of the component, or I can just see no components, nothing at all. Um, generally, I have it on um, red, and what what I'll do is, as you can see here, it's kind of a light gray. Um, if I just select all of these, and right click, then I'll have a few options. So I can keep the preview on, which means it's going to preview everything and if I just hide these geometries here grasshopper you can see here um, it's all my grasshopper geometry in red so if I highlight these geometry components and right click and I click preview off you can see it's gonna go dark gray and it's um, not showing it anymore so I'm gonna preview this on again what I can also do while we're here is I can enable um, the components and I can disable components. So disabling it, you, it'll go kind of a faded gray, um, meaning that the components aren't, nothing is, um, it's basically disabled. So I can just enable that again. And then if I wanted to say bake this geometry, um, so baking means basically translating the geometry that you have in Grasshopper back to Rhino. All I need to do is select on the geometry, right click, and then go bake. And it's going to ask me um, which layer in Rhino I'd like to bake that in. And then I select layer one and press OK. And you can see now um, I've got this um, red box from Grasshopper. So that's the basic kind of geometry um, containers and enabling and visualizing. And uh, um, we also have things like uh, we can right click on the canvas when we've got a component selected and click zoom and it's gonna zoom into the component um, geometry. Uh, we can group certain um, components together. So we can group these together. And then we can also um, Recompute, which basically will recompute the grasshopper canvas and then also lock the solver. So, locking the solver is quite important. 
Um, if you're doing something heavy or if your computer starts to get a bit slow, we can lock the solver, keep kind of visually scripting um, so I can keep working and, you know, adding components, but it's not going to compute it, um, the algorithm, until I unlock the solver. So that's kind of the main things you need to know about this kind of right hand, uh, right click toggle window. Um, another thing to mention is um, you don't always have to go searching for components up here. You can double click on the canvas and then this kind of search um, bar will appear and then we can start typing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how we're going to do a simple move um, command where we move this box basically um, from this point um, to this point. So the first thing we want to do is we can double click on our canvas and just like in Rhino when you have commands um, we can search for a command. So I want to move a component so I'd need the move component and if I press enter then this is going to give us this component here. So most components um, are quite self-explanatory and they'll have, if you hover over them, what they um, do. So this is kind of a command um, and I'll show you what it does. And so all components will have an input side, which is this left side here, and an output side, which is this right side here um, and if we hover over them basically um, the components will basically tell us what we what we need in terms of inputs um, so in this case to move our um, geometry the component needs a geometry to move so that being our box and then it needs to know what direction and motion that uh, we want to move the box in. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to take our um, box geometry which is housed in our container and I'm just going to, if we can see these kind of white bubbles, I'm going to left click and hold and it's going to bring this arrow and I can just plug it into geometry. So now you can see um, something's happened. Um, and it's moving slightly, but that's not the kind of direction we want to move it in. We want to move it this way. So that's the kind of X direction. So in Rhino, um, Rhino, if you can see at the bottom left here, it works off the, the um, world X, Y, Z. So we want to move it in the X direction. So again, I'm going to double click. I'm going to press X. I'm going to search for the unit X component. And basically what this does, it, it's going to tell the move component which direction it wants to move, that being X. So I'm going to do the same, plug that into here. And now I need to tell it how much do I want to move it. So to do that, it's pretty simple. We can double click again um, and we can just type a number. So I'm going to move it, say, 10. Um, maybe that might not be enough. I'm going to move that 25 and I'm going to plug that into here. And so you can see here, it's now moving um, 25 or 100 meters. It's all also um, relevant to what scale you're working in in um, Rhino. So now that we've we've got this geometry, we can see this is our previous geometry and this is our translated geometry. So what we could do is we can have a point container. We can output that. Um, and then we can bake this, and there you have our new geometry. Um, and it also gives you um, a transform. So I'll show you now um, what happens if, say, something goes wrong. Um, so I'm just going to purposely make this throw out an error. So you can see now um, the component has gone red. So basically, when a component goes red like this, it basically means that there, um, there's an um, error in your inputs. Um, and generally, it'll tell you what these, this error is. So you'll see there'll be a kind of um, 
a little text bubble. If we hover over that, it's saying the data conversion failed from a number to a vector. So basically um, what that means is the input, um, as you can see here, it needs to be a vector. It can't be a number like I'm putting up here. Um, whereas the original, when it was working before, I was putting in an input. So whenever it goes red, um, the first thing to do is look at this um, error and then check your kind of inputs that they're all correct, etc. Um, so that's kind of the basic um, use of components. So from here, what we could do is we can, you know, keep building this script and keep going and keep going until we um, achieve what we want to achieve. Um, so the next thing I'm going to show you is data structures. Um, this is just going to be a brief introduction into what data structures are within um, Grasshopper and just generally coding. Um, I've included in this part uh, quite a good YouTube video that um, goes into more in depth on what um, data structures are in, in Rhino, Grasshopper and in scripting. Um, but it is something that it's important to know because um, as you kind of get more complex with um, your skills and the algorithms that you're using, data structures become increasingly important and understanding them and um, is important because generally they are the kind of things that cause the most errors. So the best way to explain it is through um, this bottom kind of section here. So I'm just going to go into the I'll put this, turn this on. So I'm going to right click and turn this on. So we can see, let's start with this. So we can see we've got first here, we've got a series of points. So we've got five points one, two, three, four, five. Um, and so in Grasshopper, basically, um, it works, works off lists, basically. So imagine, you know, you've got a shopping list when you go to the supermarket um, and it's got all the things that you kind of want to buy. It's same principle um, is in Grasshopper. Um, we've got a list where our geometry, um, within our geometry container, and the list basically shows us all the different points and their position in in kind of um, Rhino space where they are. So this um, list has five sets of points or five sets of information. And so um, if I go back to these geometry containers, you know, if I put the curve into this panel, we've got a list of two curves or um, in this case, we've got a list of one B rep, so the, that kind of box. So um, Fundamentally, Grasshopper works um, uses basically lists as a data structure um, to organize um, all of the different types of geometries um, with the, that you're using within Grasshopper. So here I'm just showing you um, a list of points, five different points. So in this case, this is what we call a flattened list. So a flattened list is basically a list where, where there's only one list and all the data is housed in that one list. And that visually, that looks like this, where we have one branch, so one branch like this, with five um, pieces of information. And that information can be anything, as I said, curves, meshes, um, points, etc. Um, so that's kind of the most common um, type of um, data structure. So where we just have a flattened list with one list with all um, all of our um, information that we're using. The next type is kind of what we call what Grasshopper calls a grafted list, whereby basically now instead of having um, one list, 
um, with five pieces of information. I've got five lists, so five branches, if we're using the tree terminology, uh, which Grasshopper uses. I've got five branches or five lists with one piece of information each. And so that basically looks like this, where I've got five branches and then the red parts are all the one kind of inf pieces of information. Um, and within this kind of grafted um, list, I can also have, you know, two different types of trees or branches where one branch like this has five sets of information. So you can see zero, one, two, three, four. So I should note as well, Grasshopper is like scripting where it st starts the count from zero, not one. So it's zero, one, two, three, four. So that's one branch with five pieces of information. And then this is another branch with seven um, sub lists and um, one, inf one piece of information in each sub list. So I can, you know, keep adding to this where we've got, you know, two pieces of, you know, five um, lists with three pieces of information, et cetera, et cetera. And the more complex it gets, um, this becomes a good way of managing um, lots of pieces of information that are kind of related to each other. Um, but are also separated in some sort of organized um, way. So the reason why this is important is because data organization is critical um, in terms of how you go about kind of modeling. If you can imagine, if I try to start complex Ali setting up an algorithm with this type of data set, with this type of data set, it's going to be um, a bit of a problem. Um, you'll, we'll go through this um, as the semester goes along, um, and it's important that you watch this data structure video, um, but it is something just to have a basic framework and understanding of um, what kind of data structures there are within Grasshopper. Um, so then the next thing I'll go through with you quickly is then how to install um, plugins. Um, so we'll be using a couple of plugins during the semester. Um, so the first thing you need to do is in the top left hand corner, select file, show special folders and then components folder. And that's going to open up this um, libraries folder in your um, C drive. And then all you need to do is um, I'm going to navigate to studio content software. And all you need to do is any time you download a plugin, and generally uh, most of the plugins are held here in Food for Rhino. It's a kind of free kind of app store for Grasshopper. You can download all these plugins. Um, they'll appear like this where there'll be a green component. Um, and sometimes they'll also have other components with them. And all you need to do, first of all, is make sure if we right click and go properties um, that they're unblocked. So in this security and we'll do that for both of them then all we need to do is just drag these into our um, libraries folder that we've opened so just copy and paste um, them in here sometimes what will also happen is um, there'll be an orange um, type of file and that's basically a user objects file so what we'll do is if we go back to file special folders user objects um, those files will look like this and all we need it's the same principle all we need to do is um, from the 
plugin that you've download, downloaded. We just copy all these into um, our user object file as well. So that's basically how you install a plugin into Rhino. And then all you need to do is close um, Grasshopper and Rhino and then reload it and it'll open. Um, a couple last things um, in this side menu um, of the file I've provided you here. Um, there's a few quick shortcuts um, that you can use um, just to help get you around. Um, there's some color swatches. If you want to group things, you can just control Z. Um, all you need to do is right click on it, make default color. And then we can you know, group some things as well as um, different color swatches that we might want to use to visualize geometry. So if we go back to that box, um, if I just control C and control V this color swatch, uh, what I can do is go custom preview. And we can input this into geometry, put this into material. And you can see now the box is blue. Um, a couple last things. Um, you can have multiple Grasshopper um, files open at once in this top right hand corner. If you right left click on it, um, it'll open up all the kind of um, files that you have open, as well as um, a couple of display things. Um, that's generally personal preference for the individual user. If we go up to the top left and click display, um, there are a few ways to visualize the components. So I personally like to have the icons of the components and then the full names of the inputs and outputs. Um, some people like to have, if we unclick draw icons, just the what the command is, a move and that. Um, other people also just like the abbreviated um, input and output names, um, but that's, again, there's no kind of right or wrong way to do it. It's all personal preference. Another thing that's really um, helpful is if you go down to this canvas widget and make sure you've got profiler on, um, as the kind of semester goes along, um, things might get a bit heavier, so you can see here we've you know, increased the amount of trees. Uh, um, and as components start to get heavy, you'll see if you have the profiler on, um, it'll throw this kind of tag at the bottom. And basically that's just telling you how much the um, time it's taking for each component to compute um, its particular function. Um, so that's really helpful um, down the line. Um, then finally, I'll just show you another visualization thing. Um, in the top right corner, we've also got, um, we can change the kind of preview settings. Um, so that's going to change. Uh, back and just switch this off. that's going to change the red and green colors of our um, selection so we can change that so normal selected I personally don't like to change these I just like to have them as is um, and then finally to save there's the save button here we can this kind of box with the X in it, we can click that to see the entire document, or we can also create names views if we're if the document gets really big and you want to um, focus on specific things. Then we also have different kind of we can scribble. Um, another thing is um, the panels are quite a useful tool if you want to just take notes on what things are or um, help you remind do of things, etc. And then moving through the semester, if at any point you say there's a component on the 
the canvas um, within the kind of code that I've given you that you don't know where it is in the library. What we can do is if you press Control and Alt and you left click, um, that will basically then Gossip will show you like it's doing now where that component is. I can do that on any control component. So it's just Control Alt left click and it's going to show you where these components are. Um, so that's a pretty helpful um, tool for new, especially for new people um, within Grasshopper. Um, in terms of what to expect through the semester, um, you're not going to be required to, to um, create Grasshopper scripts from scratch. Um, so, um, but having a kind of just basic understanding of what I've gone through today will help um, being able to use the tool. Great. Um, I will see you in the next tutorial.